Are you sick of hearing from practically everyone that the market isn't done crashing? I mean, honestly, how many times do you have to fall for the same thumbnail over and over again before you finally had enough? The bulls are back, baby. And in today's video, I'm going to uncover why I believe the stock market has bottomed and why the current rally is one you can actually trust. So. Let's dive in and discover why the bull market of 2023 is a dominant force in play. After the recent jobs report from January, the stock market was under some decent pressure, but Fed Chair Powell's dovish appearance at the Economic Club of DC helped to calm investors' nerves. And despite some chaotic trading that day, the stock market recovered sharply, and I believe this is one clear sign that the bulls are actually in control. So at what point will the bear stop calling this a bull trap and realize that the bottom was back in October of last year? year and the bull market has actually been underway for the last five months. And here's my next point that no one's paying attention to. Have you been keeping an eye on high yield spreads lately? If not, it's time to take a closer look. These spreads have been on a major rally and are now back to levels last seen in May of 2022. In just a few months, high yield spreads have gone from 650 basis points to 418. That is a massive improvement. To give you some context here, back in May of 2022, the S&P 500 was around 4,300 to 4,400 points. So as you can see, there is a lot of room for equities to catch up here on the high yield spreads. This is a positive sign for the stock market and we'll be exploring why in more detail later here in the video. Here's something else that might blow your mind. Let's all go down memory lane, shall we? Did you know that the S&P 500 usually sees an average of 22% gains in the year following a negative high yield return year? Well, that's exactly what I'm looking for in 2023. The reason for this is because by the end of the year, a lot of bad news has already been factored into the market time and time again. Take the financial crisis in 2008, for example. It was only just discovered how bad the housing market was in 2008 and everything came crashing down on Wall Street because investors knew what was coming for Main Street. The trade was made on Wall Street before it was actually felt in everyone else's pockets. And the same thing is happening right now. The S&P 500 fell 37% in 2008, but then gained an astounding 26% in 2009 and another 15% in 2010. The dot-com bubble performed this way as well. In 2002, we saw the S&P drop 22%. The following year, it was up 28%. And the year following that, in 2004, it was up another 11%. Everyone likes to compare present day as if it's the 1970s. So let's revisit that. The Paul Volcker regime tanked markets by 40% between the tail end of 73 and 1974. The S&P gained a whopping 60% the following two years. By now, you get my point. Enjoying the video so far? Hit that like button to show me some love. And if you want to further support the channel, consider pressing that join button next to subscribe. Get exclusive access to streams from your boy and all kinds of other value ads by joining the chaos crew. Would love to have you guys over there. All right, getting back to the market, here's another thing. The S&P 500 is also showing rapid improvements in market structure with several signals pointing towards a strong market. Here's a rundown of those. Financial conditions are expected to be more relaxed this year, which could push up stock prices, particularly in technology, discretionary, and industrial sectors. If the first five days of trading in 2023 show gains of more than 1.4%, the outlook for the full year is actually quite positive. In the past, when stocks have gained more than 1.4%, in the first five days following a negative year, the median gain for the first half of the year has been 9.5%, which we are pretty close to. Over the full year, the median gain has been around 26%, which could take the S&P 500 to over 4,800, back to those all-time highs. This has actually happened seven out of seven times since 1950. When we look at the charts on February 2nd, 2023, the S&P 500 had what's called a golden cross where the 50 day moving average crosses over the 200 day moving average. It's the first time that we've seen the 50 day over the 200 day since March of 2022. On February 7th of this year, the S&P 500 closed above the 50% retracement of its entire decline for the second day in a row. These signals indicate that the internal market structure of the S&P 500 is vastly improving. And honestly, this is something to actually be excited about. Why, why do we have to always be all so doom and gloom all the time? The best strategy I think is worth taking advantage of as a result of all of this and from the Federal Reserve's recent course correction is investing in technology and small cap stocks. Both the NASDAQ 100 or the QQQ and the Russell 2000 or the IWM 
are also showing signs of a strong breakout. The Russell 2000 index in particular has already broken out and is performing well. On the other hand, the NASDAQ 100 index is breaking out on a relative basis and recently crossed above its 200 day moving average. There are still many technology stocks in the broad market that are significantly underperforming and are a great opportunity for investment in my opinion. Approximately 20% of technology stocks in the Russell 3000 index are down by more than 75% from their all-time highs, and this offers a huge potential for growth. To top it all off, here's three more points that I'd like to make here. One is short interest. As we've seen, short interest in technology stocks has been on the rise. I think this increase in skepticism from investors is actually a good sign. It could be a source of fuel for even more upside in the future in the form of covering those shorts. Point two here is going to be benefiting from financial conditions. Tech stocks are the primary beneficiaries of the recent course correction by the Fed. In terms of financial conditions, tech stocks have the highest correlation to easing financial conditions and the least exposure to cost pressure for producers. This makes them an attractive option in the current market, and we're already starting to see that. This is going to continue from here, in my opinion. Point three here is technical improvements. And to top it all off, the technical picture of technology stocks seems to be improving. We're seeing the relative performance of the QQQ break above key trend line and close above the 200 day moving average for the first time since April of last year. This flip in the technical picture is a positive sign for technology stocks moving forward. I kept saying technical and technology. My God, that was hard. Here's the bottom line for me. Core inflation has been falling faster than both the Federal Reserve and consensus estimates predict. This is important because wage inflation is already close to the three and a half percent target set by the Fed as indicated by aggregate payroll. The Fed could respond to this situation in a dovish manner by adjusting its inflation view, which would result in easier financial conditions. The bond market has already factored in this possibility and is trading at levels that are below the Fed's projections for the terminal rate. When we look at historical data, there have been 19 instances of a negative return for the S&P 500 since 1950. In the following year, stocks were flat, meaning a return of plus or minus 5%, only 11% of the time. However, stocks were up by more than 20%, 53% of the time, making it five times more likely for stocks to rise by 20% than to be flat. When considering all 73 years since 1950, the odds of a flat year are 16% compared to only 11% following a negative year. This difference is significant. The odds of a gain greater than 20% are also higher at 27% compared to 53% following a negative year. This shows that the odds of a gain greater than 20% are double because of the decline that happened last year. So to sum this up, the data suggests that a flat year may not be as likely as a substantial gain following a negative year. The decline in 2022 may have created opportunity for investors like you and me to benefit from higher returns this year and maybe even in 2024. Well. What do you think? Have I made it compelling enough for you to run with the bulls or are you still stuck in bear mode? Let me know what you think in the comments below and be sure to hit that notification bell to get notified when I go live twice daily on this channel. And until then, stay safe. And as always, I will see you all before the bell and B Smith is out.